So they start trying to do the exorcism of, and of course, the demon gets in his head right away. We see Rosario standing there eating, but she's eating a bird like a cartoon character eating corn on the cob. <laughs> she's eating right? All I can, it's me trying to podcast in the first year of this show. Just like, <laughs> you guys doing an exorcism? <laughs> It's got beans in it. They say you're not supposed to put gene beans in chili, but... God-awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I haven't run out of ways to finish this sentence yet. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Russell Crowe in theaters. Very exciting. Yeah, we had a Very field trip. exciting. Again. Ooh. I was not entertained, if I'm being honest, but okay. it was fun. <laughs> well done, sir. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. Fantastic and amazing. You didn't have a Russell Crowe joke to open with? You didn't have something sitting in your back Russell pocket? Russell Crowe. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, I guess the answer is no. Uh, so tell us, Heath. Beautiful mind over there. <laughs> what will we be breaking down today? We watched The Pope's Exorcist. It's the very real story of a Catholic <laughs> priest named Gabriel Amorth, the Michael... Jordan of exorcism, which is a really silly concept, but they're sure that's a thing. This guy, for real, the, the person it's based on in 2013, claimed to have performed 160,000 exorcisms mm -hmm. over his career. Yes. And, and there's like a big fight about it in the Catholic Church. Not that exorcisms are silly and nothing, but that it, it wouldn't be possible to do that many. Yeah. There's like some guy who is who is in second place now who's like furious about this number. Yeah, it's like the it's the Wilt Chamberlain fuck math of Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So he must have <laughs> fucked eleven people a day from Yeah, right, right. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved The Exorcist, but you wish it starred fucking Wario, you <laughs> will love this movie. Yes, you will. Yeah, and I wanted to tackle this up front because I saw a few like, yeah, but this was just a fun romp type comments on our social media when we announced that we were doing this movie. And I feel like I need to emphasize up front how insidious it is to keep pretending that exorcism is a real thing. Right, like like children will die because of this stupid fucking movie. I'm, I'm sorry to start off being a bummer like that, but there's no fucking romp here. This movie encourages people to try to abuse the mental illness out of their children, and it's supposed to be based on a real fucking guy. You know, rompy stuff, just yeah, wacky, right. <laughs> abusive children type stuff enabling. Yep. You can't get your tongue that far in your cheek. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay, but here's the thing that makes it kind of extra bad. The movie also admits that not all mentally ill children need exorcisms, mm -hmm. just some of them. Yeah. Just the the magic one. Yeah, it's like you're talking to a 9-11 truther and he's like, look, I'm a skeptic too. And you want to be like, I, exorcisms are illegal for you to say that word. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. so, all right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best, best, thick, Russell Crowe and a Vespa. You sure. Oh yeah. my God. It's so delightful. Before I even watched it, I just looked up like the poster and I saw Russell Crowe in a Vespa and I was like, all right, that's all I'm going to be able to see for two hours. Yep. It's just that guy. And, and he's on a Vespa and it was his idea. Russell Crowe, the actor was like, I want to be on a Vespa because yeah. it's really cool. I saw a priest on a Vespa once and it was like the best. The tinier, the better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, so, and, and that actually moves right into my best worst, which is best worst Oh, trust us, this is scary. <laughs> right? It, we start off with a guy in a funny hat on a little tiny ass Vespa, almost, you know, clown sized compared to his size or whatever. And then we're like, but this is a very serious horror movie. Look, uh, we just watched Night of the Fucking Lepus. And I'm going to say this is the best worst. Oh, trust us, this is scary. Oh, yeah, for sure. And okay, this is kind of a spoiler for like the last four seconds of the movie, but I do have to point it out here. I'm going to go with best worst 
attempted a podcast diverse. Right. We'll talk about it when it happens. <laughs> Is there a podcast diverse about this now? There's going to be a lot of sequels. <laughs> All right. Well, given his notorious temper, we probably don't want to keep Russell waiting for long. So we're going to keep the break brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the unintentional silliness that is the Pope's Exorcist. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, we're going to have a lot of fun with this week's movie. But it's important to remember that if you were a loved one or experiencing demonic possession, no. You are not. Mm -mm. That's right, Eli. No, you're not. What you're experiencing is mental illness 100% of the time. Guaranteed, no matter what. That's what it was. Indeed. But if you or a loved one think there might be demons or heck, even if you just need somebody to talk to, BetterHelp is a great place to start. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. BetterHelp, because it's never demons. Mm -mm. Thank you so much for coming. Are you the priest? Uh, no, uh, we're podcasters, actually. I'm Noah. This is Heath. Hi. But, but, but I, I called for an exorcist. Yeah, no, I know. It's a little confusion there. Our friend Eli listed us as exorcists in the phone book as a as a prank war. Yeah, but I mean, we're here, so you need help or you want us to do something? Yes, please. Can you talk to my son, Timmy? Fuck off. You see? You see? Yeah, okay, sure. Hey, um, hey, demon. You know not what you trifle with, mortal. Well, I mean... We trifle with, you're a demon, right? Y yes, one of the 200 who fell from heaven with the dragon. Changed voices, and now you're like a stupid opposite day thing, or what's going on? It is not stupid. Did it again. It's pretty stupid, man. You're a demon from hell, and your MO is taking over tweens and making them do backbends? I'm destroying the innocence of a child. Uh, I, I don't want to make it a contest, but the Catholic Church is way ahead on that. So. Oh, like what? Like lifetimes ahead. Like way okay. ahead. D damn it. I just. Yeah. But we'll, we'll tell you what, though. You leave the kid's body and we will set you up with a podcast. Yeah, totally. Evil does surprisingly well in our market. So good stuff. Can I do drop in ads like every six minutes? I wouldn't expect anything else, Demon. I wouldn't expect anything else. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on that fucking, that one sound from every preview, and then a stupid-ass quote from the priest, the actual priest that this movie is based on, as one of the devil is happiest when we don't think he exists kind of thing. Oh, he's the, yeah, the thing he stole from the usual suspects, whatever. Yeah. Yes! Right. It's your own thing. I just wrote in my notes, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I wrote the I wanted to go to my room anyway of apologetics. Yeah, no, the <laughs> devil wanted you to not believe he exists. That's why he's so non-existent looking. <laughs> and that's why he never possesses people who don't believe in him. It's it's, it's like yeah, a trait right, thing. right. Because then, yeah, he fucked <laughs> that up. So then we, <laughs> we cut immediately to Russell Crowe on this tiny little moped it is i'm sorry it's like it's impossible for anybody to look badass on a moped but he's not even trying nope so imagine a scary movie and i'm the monster and i'm on a rocking horse that's way too yeah. small for like, <laughs> that's how silly every time we see this is well when he shows up he's on a moped he's wearing a silly hat and he's got a fucking pig sidekick i'm like there's no fucking way this is a horror movie <laughs> yeah yeah you don't have the guts movie you don't have the fucking guts <laughs> If that pig talks, this is a children's cartoon, no matter what the fuck else happens in this movie. <laughs> yep. And look, I don't want to make too many fat jokes about Russell Crowe, okay? Because I'm a big body dude myself. But here's what I will say. The fact that in the opening scene, he walks into people at dinner and they all instantly look terrified kind of <laughs> tracks with what Russell's bring into the film physically. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I thought he was looking good in this. I thought he's he's definitely, it's big Russell Crowe and yeah, I think it's working yeah. for him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that the moped is making him look bigger than he is too. Anyway, so. <laughs> if you shave around the moped. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he walks into this house and, and apparently the son at this house is is 
possessed by a demon, right? Like the priest walks up and briefs him in a little walk and talk on the way up, right? So he goes upstairs. The kid's all demoned up. He says, I am legion. I wrote, boo, boring, been there, done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, I enjoyed the response to this. Russell Crowe's like, oh, you're, you're legion. I feel like you're lying, though. I feel like you're lying. Because yes. like, right away with the legion thing, as soon as I walked in, you did the like quote from the Bible. Mm, really? You did the one? The one demon that's in the book. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. At least go to the library and pick up a deep cut. Okay. Just make sure you don't do a sillier nickname for a demon later. Because that would, <laughs> that would ruin the scariness. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, but Russell Crowe, we're supposed to learn here, is is skeptical when he, you know, comes to do exorcisms, right? He's he's asking the demon. He's like the, the Harrison Ford to replicants of demons, right? Yes. Yes, exactly. He's like asking a bunch of demon questions. The demon's not getting the answers right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the most basic. To, what's my name? Where? Wow, really slow, Demon? really slow. Yeah, no. <laughs> so you said Legion already, but then Russell Crowe starts baiting him, right? He's like, he's like, I double dog dare you to possess this pig instead of the kid that you're in right now. I bet you can't. I bet you're too much of a sissy to possess this. Pig. It was like a demon trying to get prescribed Adderall badly, and like <laughs> Russell Crowe is like, no, no, that feels like you made that one up too. No, yeah, but we should be clear. It works in the scene. Yes. He fucking rabbit season, duck seasons, the demon, including the gunshot at the end. Right. No. Yeah. The demon jumps into the pig and then the priest standing behind the pig shoots it to death. And of course, all of us wrote, well, that's the silliest exorcism ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, right. It's the thing Jesus did, right? He shot demons yeah, into yeah. a pig. So that's why the pig was there. Mm -hmm. At this point, though, I was like, okay, if this is about a demon pig for the rest of the movie, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds great. <laughs> Such a better movie. No shit. Than what yeah. we got. No. But I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I think that this scene is supposed to be like, oh, this kid's mentally ill. He's not really possessed. So he just tells him that the demon's in the pig and the kid stops having a mental illness. Yeah, we're going to establish that uh, in a couple of minutes, a little later in the movie. We're going to establish that that's exactly what just happened. Right, which means that in the world of this movie, you can brer rabbit people out of mental illness. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That all I need is Russell Crowe to show up during my house during a depressive episode and be like, you're not the unhappy. And I'd be like, you got me. Yeah. You're right. Got me. Cracks a pun joke. He's ah, you smiled. You're not. You're fine now. You're fine. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that's been keeping schizophrenics back all this time is that no one explains how their delusions don't make sense. Right. No, that's it. So we cut to July of 1987. We've got an American family moving to a haunted castle in Spain. And there's your first problem right there, right? You know, you kind of have it coming. Yeah. yeah. I also just want to point out that we've watched a lot of horror movies and I've watched even more on my own because horror movies tend to be some of the best, worst movies. This is the laziest exposition family I have ever fucking seen. Porn watches this exposition and is like, come on. I mean, something. Build a character. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just an obnoxious, passive aggressive daughter mom fight in a long car ride. Yes. So they're trying to, to exposit stuff, but the daughter's like, golf, whatever. Fuck you, mom. <laughs> so nothing right. really happens. And they're just like, all right, we'll just. We'll show it, I guess. We were going to tell it. This movie is so lazily written that they made the son a mute. It never comes out. It never matters. It nope. never applies to the plot. They just made him mute because they were like, fuck. A I don't want to write character. lines for him. No, yeah, exactly. That makes conversation so he's difficult. Mute. Okay, if the demon possesses the kid and then can't talk, that would have been funny. If the demon was just That like, would have oh, been awesome. Mm. Yeah. Everyone just thinks he's got a stomach flu all week because he's vomiting the pea soup up. <laughs> Oh, man, no, you really got, it must be norovirus. <laughs> and I, I also have to point out how easy it would have been for this movie to pass the Bechdel test here, right? Because the, the son is in the back. He's mute. He's not part of the conversation. It's the mom and the daughter, and they can be talking about anything at all. And what they have them talk about is the mom slut shaming the daughter for how short her shorts are and the fact that construction workers will see her. <laughs> Yeah, the kid who can't talk might as well jump in and be like, I'm here also as a man. Okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm not talking ever again. Yeah, right. <laughs> also, look, again, I don't want to be the guy who spends the whole podcast on physical appearances, but like, 
This kid does not look normal before he's possessed. Okay. <laughs> this this is very clear. Like, if you showed me this little boy, I'd be like, I mean, he's like 25% possessed right now. Probable That's- demon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying a more powerful demon doesn't take over later in the movie. I'm saying when he wasn't wearing special effects makeup in this movie, it didn't help a ton. Yeah. So, you know, when you're like indoor kid, it's like demon kid for sure. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So then we cut back to Russell Crowe. He's getting ready for some big, important meeting in the Vatican. But before he could do that, he has to have a quick theological discussion with Bishop Lumumba. Yeah. Right. This is the one where he's like, hey, why doesn't God kill Satan? Like that. That would make more sense, yeah, wouldn't it? It's the best. It goes so badly for the movie, which wrote itself here. Yes. It's just like, yeah, our, our whole God thing like contradicts itself, doesn't it? <laughs> and the other priest is like, yeah, yeah, should we cut? <laughs> One of his <laughs> responses in this conversation, again, which never he never explains further is, well, God isn't God without free will. And I was just like, wait, what? What? No, what? I have, what? I have what do you mean, Yeah, <laughs> I have questions. <laughs> but Bishop Lumumba was like, yep, that makes entirely perfect sense. Anyway, next scene. So we go back to the, the, the family. They're now arriving at their castle. There's this great moment where the daughter's like, God, I wanted a better castle. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious, mom? A seven-bedroom Arathian? Gaw. <laughs> so, no one's going to want to come to my parties here. <laughs> <laughs> and at one point, that daughter, she just lights up a cigarette in the middle of this giant, scary house. And mom's like, hey, what do you don't just write in the, don't smoke right there. And the daughter's just like, hey, hey, look at me. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. They might as well have her just screaming the word angst from off yep. camera while mom's talking to the priest guy. I wrote my notes during this section. Sweetie, too much rebelling in one opening scene. Okay, right. yeah, exactly. let's just, okay but let's pick a rebellion. In fairness, this is horrible parenting, right? Because like a whole bunch of construction workers are there like fixing this place up. And one of them is like, hey, welcome to like, you know, the house made of fears that your mom just moved you into against your will. <laughs> Good luck with this. And that's what happens to him. Yeah, how dare a mother move her child into the castle that she owns? Well, and let me let me double agree with with that, Heath, because as we're going to learn in a couple of minutes, these children's father died less than a year ago. So this woman walked over to the car accident where her husband got speared through the brain and she was like, I should move these kids out of the country. I should get them. Something spooky <laughs> would be perfect. Yeah. This is also where we're going to meet Thomas, the random priest that shows up to be part of the movie, right? Thomas is the best. Thomas will do everything wrong. Thomas is the funniest comedic character ever (laughs) written into a film ever. (laughs) Charlie Champlin's The Tramp has nothing on Thomas as far as comic relief goes. So, okay. So we cut to Amy brushing her teeth. This is where we get the pre-jump scare jump scare right the kid in the mask the little boy in the mask oh the guy fox demon thing that he found <laughs> that he put yeah. On. yeah can we arrange for some kind of ticket system for the pre jump scare jump scare for horror movies like look if you want to make it scared by someone just walking into the bathroom because you did the weird thing with the music and the sound effects you could do it but you should have to pay like five hundred dollars to the local <laughs> swimming pool <laughs> right yes for every time you do right oh that was just a door closing loudly I a gotcha. jar or something to keep the money yeah right they might as well just have the director walk on screen here at this point and go I promise there's a horror movie in here somewhere see mess scary Ooh. anyway so and the kid shaven haircut knocks and the sister has to answer back and yes listener that is foreshadowing my best worst here they are going to try to make shaven a haircut scary <laughs> mm-hmm. and i cannot wait to talk about it it's the literal opposite of a potential pop scare yes because you know in your heart in your bones <laughs> what's coming next everybody does right so, okay, so little brother goes exploring the creepy basement. He's like, oh, there's weird banging sounds. I better check that out. And I'm like, there's construction everywhere, all over this fucking house. There's got to be banging sounds coming from seven directions right now. Yeah, and he finds a little hole in one of the walls in the basement, mm-hmm. and he looks through the little hole, and he's like, oh, it's a secret room of evil. I'm not going to tell anybody about this. I'll circle back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Further comments about that. I, I almost went with best worst glory hole. <laughs> 
just once I want to watch a horror movie where a child under 12 doesn't immediately explore the scariest and dankest area <laughs> yeah. of the house they've been put in. <laughs> that would be nice. Just a demon being like, Ugh, he's not going to explore this. I thought he's not coming I'd be down. able to start up my thing. He's been up there playing Nintendo the... Switch for like four and a half hours. <laughs> God damn it. So... Less screen time. And that's three, but thank you. Thank you for saying, and I'm the evil one. <laughs> so then mom comes in to have a heart to heart with Amy where they again managed to fail the Bechdel test, right? They start the conversation talking about dad and end talking about Henry. Oh my God. I can only assume that the actual script pages said, you know, exposition, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And these two actresses were kind of winging it. Right. No, they just go back and forth stating their various motivations and stuff. So dad died and now mom has no choice but to restore this castle and sell it or get a job and fuck that noise, right? So they're they're restoring the castle. I feel like it's worth more than nothing even before the restoration, but what do I know? You would think, yeah, an, a, like an ancient castle abbey might be yeah. might be able to support your suburban life in Bayonne, Ohio, wherever the fuck you live. <laughs> so You know that one house where everybody's like, yeah, there were murders there. It's like that, but like demon murders for this yeah. house. Mm. Uh-huh. Also, mom never says that she's like a famous architect or a famous, you know, archaeologist or specialist in any way, which means we're supposed to assume this suburban mom's husband kicks it in a car accident. And she's just like, well, I did see some side hustle stuff on TikTok about castles. I'm pretty sure I got this. Right. Why would she have to be there? Yeah. Drop ships and demonology. I'll I'll figure it out. (laughs) So, yeah, but we also learned in this scene that Henry has been tiny Tim in it since dad died a year ago. Mm-hmm. Then we cut to, back to Russell Crowe on his little Vespa. <laughs> the best. He's so silly. Every time it comes on screen. You My notes are help. just pure sex. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to get in sillier and sillier vehicles as the movie goes oh, there like you go. on a unicycle in the next one. <laughs> he's doing a handstand he's on got a, a segue by the end of the movie. The yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Gotta you. Have a penny farthing in there. So, but he's gotta go and see a panel of very important Catholics. Right. This is yeah. where he admits that they're like, you did an unauthorized exorcism. He's like, no, no, I just tricked a mentally ill person into thinking that I pig murdered his mental illness away. It's such a weird conversation. First of all, this is an HR meeting with priests at at the Mm -hmm. Vatican. That's a bad start. And they're like, (laughs) you did demon magic wrong, which is also stupid and silly, but he's like, no, okay, serious argument back. That wasn't an exorcism technically, so it doesn't count. I did say the words, I'm going to summon Satan, but I I was tricking a kid. I was just tricking a kid, and now he's fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he says at this point, he's like, look, 98% of the cases that get referred to me are just mental illness. And I'm like, I'll take the over (laughs) if we're we're placing bets. I wrote my notes and 2% are me lying about mental illness. Right, right. According to the movie, the 2% is evil demons, literal demons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I just have to point this out because it made me so happy. This was almost my best worst. Right before they're about to start the hearing, one of the guys goes, this is a formal hearing at the Vatican, and therefore it would be in English. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> they, they make it's so lazy. Do they just have like bullshitting meetings in Italian where they just like <laughs> sit on pillows and like hang out? Yeah, because like how can yes. you take Italian seriously? That it just sounds mm-hmm. silly. Yeah. As everyone knows, the Vatican's official language <laughs> is <laughs> English. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, but he's talking about the the 2% of cases that are actual demon possessions. And he's like, you know, those possessions confound all of science. And I'm like, unless you mean it in their effort to document it, you're wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we also, we have to meet this character. He's like the, the EPA guy in Ghostbusters, right? He's the guy who's skeptical <laughs> of all of this demon mm-hmm. possession stuff. And he's going to have to get covered in marshmallow fluff over and over again in this movie as well, right? He's the Vatican skeptic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and he he's announcing to Russell Crowe that they're like downsizing the exorcism department at the Vatican, which was a real thing, probably still is. Yeah. yeah. The guy it's based on was like, again, the Michael Jordan of the exorcism department. And he like became the president of the International Exorcist Society or whatever. It's so stupid. Now I'm picturing an Italian guy like doing a super long jump, but instead of a basketball, he's just got a child's head. And instead of a hoop, it's like holy water. (laughs) (laughs) And really, Scottie Pippen was doing the exorcisms if you really like look into it. Thank you. 
So, okay, so, but Russell Crowe's pissed about all of this downsizing shit and this, this idea that maybe exorcisms aren't needed anymore in the Vatican. So he's leaving. He gives him his, like, talk to the Pope speech. Yeah, yeah. And he fucks off. Yeah. He, he storms out, but right, <laughs> right before he storms out, he takes a victory sip of espresso that he had. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you see Russell Crowe be like, hot. That didn't. Yeah, mm, that's the, hot, that, that didn't hot. work very well. Thought at all. that was a prop that was room temperature by now. Boiling. <laughs> Not even no sugar. So then we we cut to mom. She's looking over these papers in front of the very scary trust us fireplace at the castle. <laughs> When she hears a creepy sound that she has to check out. Now, again, this is just a bang. I feel like old castles just make creepy sounds. And if you checked out every one, that would be literally the only thing that you would ever be able to do. Yeah, right? my house is from like the 1800s. And if I checked out every creepy sound, I would eventually be found dead of exhaustion on my bed, <laughs> right. on my basement stairs. Also, can we just all agree as a people? I, I don't like to preach here on our podcast. We're trying to have a good time. With me in unity, can we all just agree not to say hello, anyone there when we're scared? Let's just not do it. <laughs> Let's just not do it. Let's come up with a new catchphrase. I'll tell you what would freak out a ghost if you were just like, hello, this is making me come. Your ghost is immediately, your ghost is going to be like, uh-uh, I want no part of that. All right. <laughs> hello? I'm walking away to somewhere safer and I'm going to alert people. <laughs> right. There yeah. won't be a movie after this. Right. You better do something creepy now. So, oh, and then, of course, we cut to the son who opens his eyes. But trust us, it's very, very scary. The he's he's downloading Satan 4.0 or whatever. Yeah, right, right. Wanted him to have to reset from the beginning. Oh, fuck. what does that mean? <laughs> Estimated time, one hour. Oh, God, this is awful. <laughs> Where are all the bridges? I don't know. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> So then, okay, so we cut over to a couple of construction workers in the basement. One of them's like, man, I sure will be happy when I don't have to be in this house or this movie anymore. And I'm like, good news, dudes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they see the, the glory hole. They see the demonic glory hole as they're walking by, right? Yeah. Now, Heath, you're the construction expert of the podcast. When one finds oh, am I? a hole in a basement, what's the best tool just sort of shine some light on the situation. I'm going to blow it up right away by lighting a flare next road to flare. Some, yeah, road some flare, explosive definitely. gas. <laughs> Probably the best way to go in a residence. I was writing in my notes as he lit up the fucking flare instead of just turning on a goddamn flashlight. I was writing, boy, I hope it's not a gas line as the basement exploded. Guys, do we have a nuclear flashlight with like a turbine <laughs> that I could fire up? Maybe, I don't know, I'm going to need a lot of light. So, but the construction workers are like, no, it's too dangerous. There's an underlying underground gas deposit. Our guys are pulling out. And therefore, there will be nobody to say that this didn't happen later, right? <laughs> we, the last reasonable witnesses, are leaving the movie. Goodbye. Yes, right. So mom heads upstairs after they declare that they're leaving. And damn it if Henry isn't full on possessed now. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy it. So it's revealed here that he's like a demon mm -hmm. and the demon's yelling at him and he's like, you're all going to die. And they don't respond enough. Like, <laughs> so the demon gets mad that nobody takes him seriously. He yells, you're all going to die. And he's like, okay, I thought that would really just have bigger impact. Ah, face claw. And he face claws himself. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, all right, man. Right. There's, there's this moment where they're going like, okay, well, you know, he is talking again. That's good. But he's uh, demonically telling us we're all going to die, which is bad. I don't know how to, oh, face scratch. Oh. No, this is bad. This is bad. Nope. Face scratch is bad. Face scratch Should is bad. Should we just let him keep doing that? Because then the demon loses. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> so then, so we cut to the hospital Henry's getting a CAT scan or whatever. The doctors are, of course, entirely stumped. They're like, well, you know, we didn't see any mental illnesses on that CAT scan, so we don't know what to do. We give up. <laughs> we, we did see a, a tiny stick figure with horns doing like a dance while holding a trident. <laughs> do, you have any idea? do you think that's the demon doctor? No. And the doctor goes like, now, is there any chance that your kid is like severely traumatized? And the mom's like, oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah. No, I'm glad you brought that up. He's like a classic example of someone who's having a psychotic break after a traumatic incident. Like he's even suffered from short term mutism. It's it's right on the money. Yeah. We will never follow up on this. His dad just died. And if you're thinking not by getting impaled through the face while the kid while was watching, looking, you'd, yeah, be, yeah. you'd be incorrect. Yeah. No, definitely trauma, 
Right. And the doctor says, well, you know, it could be psychosis. And the mom's like, no, it couldn't. He's just a kid. <laughs> what? what? No, you yeah. need to mature on your 13th birthday. That's when you get the ability to do psychosis. It comes with your first. Puke. Right. No, it's like mutant powers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a fucked up response by the doctors here. I mean, partially good, partially fucked up. They're like, sorry, we did. It's not a demon like you asked us to test for. So your child is discharged. Take Tylenol. I don't know. But shouldn't they be like, hey, maybe some mental health care would be good? Well, but they do, right? That That's the guy, the doctor walks off and he's like, well, you know, it's probably uh, some form of psychosis. And the mom's like, no, it isn't. And and that's the end of that talk. Oh, the doctor got, okay, so good doctors. They just got shut down on the good Yeah, thing. no, this, yeah. Is, this is a movie about how much worse we were at treating mental illness issues when I was a kid, actually. <laughs> When I was about his age, I guess. So now, but to be clear, like, because they give him, they give the mom sedatives, right? They're like, hey, if he has another episode like this, give him some of these sedatives and, and it'll at least put him to sleep. There is no point in this movie where Henry wouldn't have been better off sedated, right? There's a, the fact that she, I mean, spoilers, later she will sedate him. But the fact that it takes as long as it does in this movie for her to be like, you know what? This has gotten out of line. I think it's time yes. for a sedative. Yeah. She's got the demon doing like breathing exercises for a while and sure. just mantras and stuff. So, okay. So that, then we she takes him back home and puts wet rags on him because that's what you do if someone's sick in a movie is you put wet rags on him. Yep. She's on the phone. She's going like, I need an America doctor, damn it. These Spanish doctors are like, I don't know what the fuck to, to do here. Do you have a specialist in little boy demons? <laughs> So meanwhile, so Amy, the, the rebellious daughter, she goes to get some ice and then the power goes out. Trust us, it's very scary. It's a very scary blown fuse. Okay, so this, this is the demon just setting up the mood for what I he's going to be doing? <laughs> I okay. guess. She goes downstairs to the creepy basement to, to turn the lights back on. This fuse box is hilariously dangerous, right? It's basically just throwing sparks like a downed power line. <laughs> she, <laughs> she flips it on. She looks around. And she's like, this basement is scary. I'm leaving. I'm like, I feel like the fuse box is the scariest thing. In it. <laughs> anyway, so but upstairs, Henry is being all demon. So and he's like, bring me the priest. And she's like, you know, I did meet a priest the other day. So she brings Father Thomas to see him. Yeah, so Father Thomas walks in and the, the demon kid gets mad and he's like, wrong fucking priest and he throws Thomas across the room into the wall. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is going to be fun. We're going to need a long line of wrong priests getting thrown into walls <laughs> by this demon and I will be loving this movie. Right? Sadly, no. It's like, that's on you, Henry. You just said uh, the priest. You could have been more specific. You knew the guy's... Sorry, let me, be, let me get you a cell phone number. Yeah. So, so then we, we cut back to Russell Crowe meeting with the Pope. I had no idea. I know the movie's called The Pope's Exorcist. I did not realize this character was supposed to be the Pope until I checked it on IMTV. <laughs> so, <laughs> my bad. Oh, this was the Pope himself? Yeah, this is John Paul II in, in 1987. Sure, oh. yeah. I thought this was just like boss guy, like Cardinal or whatever. Well, okay. he is because he's the Pope's Exorcist. But yes, I guess we're supposed to know that he's the only one that would wear like the all white or whatever. Yeah, and I fucking love this scene because this is... Moment for moment, word for word, the like the old cop and the chief having the like these streets aren't what they once were, yes. except except they're talking about their literal belief in a goat demon that got sent down from heaven in God's <laughs> yes. Yes. It's that but flipped, though. So like the streets aren't what they once were is right. Flipped around. He's like, we're too good at exorcism so we're not finding enough demons recently that's why they're because we've we've and now people are doubting us about exorcisms yes the argument from we've hunted the snipes to near extinction yeah right yep. yes. exactly <laughs> so dumb at one point the pope literally says it's not a fairy tale. It's a 200 demons underground. And I was like, yes. well, oh, underground. Oh. Look, I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it's been a couple centuries since y'all stuck to the fucking underground theory. Yeah. How deep underground? <laughs> right, right. Because I got bad news for you guys. We've gotten pretty fucking deep. <laughs> So, but the Pope is like, so, but I need you to go see this kid in Spain. I'm pretty sure that's where the whole plot is. Right. right. And then we see Russell Crowe going to like a fancy Vatican library. And I was like, yeah, yeah, good. You better do some important research to learn mm -hmm. the fucking mm -hmm. science of Spanish demon boys. Perfect. Yeah. 
Get up some reading. Well, and the books are as comically oversized as his scooter is undersized. He's just he's up in these hilariously big books. But yeah, apparently the Abbey, that that castle, it's, that's actually a, a, a medieval Abbey. And that's been a demon hotspot for quite a while now. Yeah. Oh. And just to be clear about the timeline, uh, this is all happening. It's like, I feel like a series of days or weeks, maybe. So mm-hmm. the demon kid was just being a crazy demon in this house with his family the whole time. I feel like I feel like the family would be kind of bored of him by now and just being like, ah, yeah, <laughs> got it. You're a demon. Okay. Yeah. Strapping down. All right. Let's see. I, I did the face scratching thing. Uh, I made the yeah, word hate appear that. on my skin. You that did. was pretty cool. You did. Mm-hmm. You guys ever play Pandemic? I feel <laughs> really like good. it's a fun, cooperative. <laughs> I mean, we talked about screen time. That's good. That would be like a together game, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, like a fun together. I, should, I got like six days to kill until Russell Crowe right. eats yeah, his right, ass onto right. that Vespa. Yeah. So I'm thinking this might be for the best. This is a weird dynamic we have in our family. But okay, yeah, let's play Pandemic. It's strange. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We're half an hour in and the plot just got going. So I think we're going to call that an act break. But we'll be back in a flash with even more of The Pope's Exorcist. Hey, podcast listener. Do you love god-awful movies? Were you open to grab some Platinum Night tickets for our live show in Detroit on July 22nd, but they sold out literally within two days? Snow, folks, snow. Well, have no fear, because we just added Iridium Night tickets. That's right, all the fun and games of Platinum Night, but with 100% more Thursday. Ah, it's Thursday. Precisely. Plus, even if you just want regular seats, you should probably grab them now because they're literally one-third gone. That's people fighting over tickets. So if you missed the boat, head over to godawfulmovieslive.com and grab your tickets to our Detroit live show before they're gone. That was goneness. Godawfulmovieslive.com. Tickets or rickets. Sorry, did you say tickets or rickets? Yeah, I ran out of stuff. Father Illusions, thank you so much for coming. Oh, of course. Okay, before you go in, I must warn you. This demon, he can smell your sins. Oh, he can, can he? Yes, and he will mock you most viciously for the sins. Got it. Well, no worries. I have a bit of a secret weapon. Oh, you do? Yep. Hey, Noah, sorry, I was parking. Wait, who's who's that? It, it doesn't doesn't matter. Eli, you mind heading up into the uh, bedroom? We've got a sin sniffer. Oh, another one. Okay, yeah, I'm on my way. Holy shit, what's wrong with this guy? Jesus, that's so much porn. This is so much porn. And here it is. No way, man. I'm out of here. This is bullshit. And there he goes. Oh, you mean the demon's gone? Yeah, pretty sure. Uh, All set in there. All good. Yeah, no, we could hear it from down here. I figured you could. So, like, how much porn? A lot. A a a lot. lot. Okay. A lot. Yep. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Russell Crowe. Scooter in his ass to Spain, I guess. <laughs> I laughed in the theater and I got in trouble here. It's so it's just, silly you, looking. It, nothing can be scary when the main character is on a Vespa. I'm sorry. That's just not a thing. Yep. I wrote in my notes, they couldn't get a sillier car, like a hot dog mobile, maybe a, <laughs> a Segway. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but eventually he shows up. There's nobody out there to meet him at first. So he like washes his armpits. Great to keep that in the movie. Checks his kit. Make sure he's got all this stuff. He's gearing up like John Wick. Well, not yet. This is this is just like, you know, busting the basement floor open. We're going to get the gearing up scene in a bit. But yeah. John Thick. And then Thomas, the, the priest, walks out and he's like, oh, shit, I know you. You're famous. I had a poster of you on my closet at fucking whatever <laughs> priest school is called. You're the Michael Jordan of fucking Yeah, exorcism. right. Yeah. yeah. I remember when those demons were up 22 to nothing and you <laughs> <there was> a, <laughs> and you, you stopped that plague of bugs. It was the miracle on lice. Yeah, <laughs> Nice, nice. 
And then Russell Crowe's the absolute worst. He's like, oh, cool. You're a big fan. Did you read specifically my books? And I'm going to name them right now. And the young guy, Thomas, is like, yeah. No, we, no, we, no, why you got to what? Uh, what you a dick? Read my fucking books. <laughs> that comes back. No, so I, I actually wrote, like, I feel you, Russell Crowe. I feel you in, in my nest. But yeah, Russell Crowe's like, well, you want some flask booze? And he's like, no, man, I don't want your fucking gross ass flask booze. So Thomas brings him in to meet the family and he's like, hey, guys, we really lucked out. The Vatican sent a guy who's really good at a talent that doesn't actually exist. So this is going to be great. Right. Yeah. And Russell Crowe's walking into the room like he's already started the audition. He's just like, has Dr. Science been helpful? No, of fucking course not. I will be doing my priest thing now. Let's do this. Yeah. I wrote my notes. A very bad idea to leave your son alone with a priest. Well, right, yeah, because he's like, well, we're going to go ahead and cure the demon stuff in him. And mom's like, mm, I don't really know about, <laughs> I was wanted to do doctor stuff. Really don't feel like we exhausted enough doctor stuff to turn to, you know, witchcraft or whatever. And he's like, come on, like, at least let me spend some time alone with your 12-year-old son in his bedroom, right? Come on. Yeah. And mom says, worth a shot. And I wrote in my notes, literally, no, not yeah. worth a shot. No, let's. Let's recalibrate the what's the worst that could happen metric that you're using. <laughs> so he goes in to see Henry. Henry's sleeping, so he has to like, he, he has to pray him awake. He takes out his little fucking demon sigil that looks like he got it with cereal box tops, right? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, hey, bud. Yup. <laughs> yup. You, you demon sleep? You having a little demon nappy? And at this point, I was very excited because either Russell Crowe beats up a kid or a kid beats up Russell Crowe. One or the other is about to happen in the movie, right? Yeah, for sure. You would think. 100%. It's the age-old dilemma of which of those two things is going to happen. Also, this is where the voice actor who was doing the demon, like his voice started to hurt him, like he was doing fucking Manscaped Man. So he decided (laughs) to go with Cockney accent for the rest of the movie. (laughs) It's so silly. He will spend the rest of the movie being like, oh, dear, you what, priest? Hello, hello, hello. (laughs) And everyone's just like, wow, that sure is scary and not one of the most comic accents of all time. (laughs) <laughs> are you a chimney sweep in hell? What's happening right now? We, we, we actually did quite a few chimney sweeps. You'd be surprised. So, but the, yeah, the demon goes like, your prayers are worthless here, father. And I'm like, yeah, that's true everywhere, though, demon. Come on. Like, like yeah. And then he he's checking. He's doing his like, you know, he's his fucking replicant check, whatever. And he pulls out the the sigil. He moves it past the kid's eyes. And the kid has like bonus irises. Yeah. And can I just say, I think that the swimming second iris is something that the mainstream doctor would have noticed. I just want to throw that out there. (laughs) Well, he didn't have the demon sigil to draw it out, Eli. He didn't need enough cereal. Right. (laughs) Russell Crowe, he ate enough cereal. (laughs) (laughs) But the demon wants to possess Father Remorth, right? That's what the demon's after. I wrote that in my notes here. They act like it's a fucking reveal later on in the movie somehow. It seems like the demons would train each other to like not get caught and show the second pair of cat eyes when the sigil gets in front of them. Yeah, yeah. right. You'd think. So, but then Russell Crowe goes, what's your name, demon? And the demon goes, my name is Blasphemy. And then you could tell the demon was like, well, that's, that sounded fucking dumb. Let me take another, let me take another crack at it. My name is. Oh, you want, you're going to try it again? You're gonna yeah, try yeah. It? I'm cool. just gonna, no, go, let, go, let me go one demon. more time. I'll give you another I guess, second. Mm-hmm. I guess, I let, my name is Knights. Mayor? <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> That's super stupid, man. Did you plan that? In Sorry, you're the epitome of evil, and you're going to have a 12-year-old boy say you're Nightmare? Your name is <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> he even puts the long pause between Nightmare like he was trying to come up with something cooler. Yeah. You know? But yeah. <laughs> and then, as though the movie isn't already broken... He's like, you only do what you do because God allows it. And the demon's like, yeah, that's weird, right? Why wouldn't God stop me? And he's like, tell me about it. I was talking to my friend in front of a painting earlier in the movie. And I said, God's not God without free will. What the fuck does that mean? I have no idea. (laughs) We we, we cut really quick before. It came out of my mouth and now it's in the movie. (laughs) Anybody could say that. Yeah. So and and of course, during their conversation, the demon's like, oh, well, let me invoke a flashback of your deeply traumatic World War Two moments. So we get a little doodly do of that time that he was in World War Two and his whole kid squadron got killed and then he had to play dead. 
Right. And later we're going to find out like he feels guilty or cowardly about that. But if he hadn't done that, they just would have killed him. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's just good strategy. Also, this is an Italian guy. I thought they were doing like a flashback to his sins. And I was like, oh, Italian guy in World War Two. OK, right. That's a fucking yeah, sin. probably some good sins here. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he, he's on the uh, resistance team. Like right. The good team. Right. Uh huh. And then the demon, and again, like going back to my best worst, they are sure that this is fucking terrifying. The demon kid coughs up a bloody bird. It's, it's the, I laughed. I laughed and got in trouble again in the theater. It's so silly. He's just like, so silly. <laughs> it's like my cat trying to get a hairball up. Yeah, right. Yes, there's with a little bit, the hairball noise. There's a little bit of feather left. With the hairball noise. They yes. left the hairball noise in. <laughs> it's it's at least as silly as you think that it is, listener. Can I get a glass of milk? Just a little something. <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, so Russell Crowe goes out, he's like, oh, okay, we're gonna have to strategize. This kid is all the way to bird hacking on his level of possession now. Yeah, he did, he did a vomit bird at me and it really hurt my feelings. <laughs> I was okay before then. The double iris thing was pretty cool. He really fumbled the ball on his name there for a minute, but I I think he came out on top with the bird vomit thing. <laughs> with the bird he, vomit, yeah. He asked Thomas, my favorite character in the movie, because how wrong and stupid he is about everything. He's like, what do you know about demons? And Thomas is like, they're fallen angels. And he's like, yes, that's super stupid. Don't think about it. But then he explains that demons have a corporate structure. They talk about the demonic org chart. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> This guy's the assistant to the regional hell demon. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really wanted him to be like, ooh, do you mind if we jump on a Zoom call with Satan and you? <laughs> yes. Um, well, okay, technically I would need to get you and Karen from HR onto the call. And then she, because I, I can't we escalate can all the way up I don't to think we can, I don't think Satan, Satan is probably uh, above my pay grade. Can I introduce you to Ball? Ball's uh, right on my level. Like, I have, <laughs> I have Ball's, I have Ball's cell phone. I got in trouble for doing like an end run once. Yeah, I don't yeah, know no, that's that a whole... It's old thing. It was on my yearly report. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but then Russell Crowe goes out to give mom the bad news. Henry is all demoned up, right? And and he's like, now, this is very important. You won't be able to save your kid unless you are Christian. So, a little recruitment angle here, but still, you know, yeah, you got to be Christian. Yeah. And this is where we explain that Henry was in the car crash that, that killed his dad, and Henry actually saw his dad get impaled. Cool. Hey, guys, just top of your heads. No wrong answers. Mm -hmm. What's the least empathetic thing a human being could say after learning of the child saw its father <laughs> die? Do you have any do you have any ideas? Maybe, maybe something along the lines of ah, trauma like that is a great gateway for demons. Yep. Is there any chance you aren't Christian enough and deserve all that shit? <laughs> <Yes>. <gasps> <gasps> he was asking for it. The movie. Yeah. Jesus. No, Christ. see. See, watching your parents die, that's on you. That's how the demons get you. Is there any chance your mom's a fucking evil atheist? Because that could have caused all this terrible stuff too. Dad, death, demons. That's on her and you, I think. And that's exactly what happens here. He's like, hey, mom, were you ever a Christian before you became an evil atheist? And she's like, yeah, I, as a kid, I guess, <laughs> sort of. And the priest's advice is like, yeah, so be more like a child. Yeah, more yeah, Christian. The, the, the problem is you no, thought I'm... about it too much. And he definitely thinks he's having a poetic moment there. He's like, trust me, a mother's love is just like God's love. And I wrote in my notes. I mean, personally, my mom has never threatened to burn me to death in fire forever. No, she's that's, gotten that's close. Fair. but <laughs> <laughs> So then, okay, so then we check in with Amy. She's being demonically knocked at. Right. So the demon is using the same method to lure her in that Judge Doom used against Roger fucking rabbit. But trust us, it's super, super scary. Sure. Let me let me get my demon checklist going here. All right. I'm going to get a bird in the throat. I'll vomit that up later. Uh, super cool <laughs> nicknames. Everyone will think are super scary. Um, and uh, yeah, who framed Roger rabbit reference? Here we go. All right. We're all set <laughs> to be taken very seriously. Well, when she goes in. Henry has red demon eyes, and I'm like, just like Judge Doom. Guys, if this turns out to be the Judge Doom origin story, I'm the fuck in. If Bob Hoskins had kicked open a door, <laughs> this is my favorite. I would have I would have taken John Q level hostages to keep this movie in theaters if this was a a secret prequel. I mean, this, fucking... this 
this movie takes place in 87. Roger Rabbit came out in 88. I don't like it. I feel like in the sequel, you could tie it all together. I don't know. All right. I, I will be looking for these connections for the rest of the podcast. From you. So you guys <laughs> handle the jokes. I'll be looking for the Toontown references. You're welcome, Jeff. Also, it's weird that all the demons slow roll their thing and like build moments. This demon's been like just slowly doing, you know, Roger Rabbit shaving a haircut, knocking uh -huh. for mm -hmm. weeks now, which is just obnoxious to the family at this point. Not scary. They're just like, ah, fucking is demon knocking. Doing, Great. We, get, we need to teach him a different tune. <laughs> so different I want a rhythm. movie where the demon just like goes straight to demon. Just like go do to go do your demon thing. Just do it right, right away. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, don't you don't pick up the bigger gun when the littler gun doesn't work. That's classic yeah. bad guy mistake right there. Yeah, just yeah. start with the bazooka. Don't uh for example, make a phone call right now. Yeah. A prank phone call. Where you're like, "Hey, uh this is this is your dead dad. I'm actually not dead. I'm actually doing fine. Psych. I'm a demon. I'm a demon." Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> you're all going to die. Okay, bye. Like like a crank call. It's so stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crank calls. Right. So the, the, the demon makes a crank call to the daughter. She runs into the room where mom and Russell Crowe are talking. And she's like, yeah, totally just got a phone call from the demon. So we definitely need an exorcist up in this house. And Russell Crowe's like, all I need is some coffee. I'll spend all night in a room with your son unsupervised. Trust me. Just you guys just go get some sleep. It'll be fine. <laughs> you guys go get some sleep. And no matter what you are here, don't. Tell anybody. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So to be clear, there's like a demon in hell in like a call center being like, okay, so I press line and then I can. Yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, and, and then I do the voice of the dad. Is that? No, just, you have to press nine it to get an outside because it's an outside line. You gotta yeah, picturing nine. an imp on the outside of the house just hanging onto the phone jack. Hey, it's me, your dad. I look like an <laughs> idiot right now. <laughs> it's me, your dad. No, just kidding. Got him. So. Fucking got him. So, okay, so Russell Crowe's praying to psych himself up for the exorcism. Thomas comes in and he's like, do you want to info dump a little bit at me before we do this? And he's like, I would love actually to info dump at you for a little bit. Let me um, let me explain how this works. We need to find out the demon's name. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Because demons work on Rumpelstiltskin rules. Rumpelstiltskin rules. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He tried to say he was night. Mayor, and then he was like, of East Town, that's HBO, stupid. Like, we, yeah, we, we have to get the full thing. Right. But before they can go in and do this, Thomas has to be, he has to go in with like a clean slate or whatever in terms of sins because the demon can smell out your sins. Right. So, so Thomas has to be absolved of all his sins first. He's like, so let's do a quick confession. You just tell me all the sinful stuff. I'll forgive you. That's how our dumbass religion works. Right. Right, but they accidentally do a rush job. Otherwise, there's no stakes to the next scene. Yeah, he goes like, oh, sure. It's been eight months since my last confession. And the and, and Russell Crowe's like, oh, fuck. We don't have time for eight months worth of sins. Yada, yada, yada. You're absolved. Yeah. Listen, right. don't say whatever the fuck you're about to say. We're just going to absolve that shit. I don't want to know. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. And what's so funny is like, look, this scene happens so that it can set up the next scene where the demon's going to reveal all their sins, blah, 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 blah. But just... Just don't have these. See Why would you have Russell Crowe run roughshod over the fucking Catholic religion so that later we can be like, oh, that's why the demon knew about their right. sins because because he skipped those confession part. Right. You would think if anyone's going to take this shit seriously, it's the guy whose job is to exercise demons. And then to make it even funnier, he turns to Thomas, my favorite character in the world, and he says, hey, professional Catholic priest, what prayer do you know by heart? And he says, Hail Mary, the prayer that I, an atheist podcaster, know. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, he's like, is that really? That's the only one, just just the one. And he's like, yeah. He's like, so, all right. So when we go in there, I just need you to say that over and over and over again. I need you to pray relentlessly, just like Coach Kennedy. Can you do that for me? And he's like, <laughs> surprisingly, no. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely can't. But yeah, sure. You're not going to believe this, but I absolutely cannot do that. He's like, I'm really going to fuck it up. not at any fucking point. Yeah. All right, so they head in for the exorcism proper. There's this great bit where he's setting up and the whole time the demon is just talking shit to him. <laughs> this is fun. So again, it's a little kid with a chimney sweep accent trying to be a demon. And they're like, hey, Henry, fuck you. Okay, 
just relax. Fuck your face. And like, he just keeps interrupting everything they do for a while. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. At one point, the demon literally says, I'm gonna fuck you. I laughed super loud and my theater got <laughs> mad at me. I did so good through this movie. I was like, I'm not going to laugh. But then the, the I'll fuck you so hard in the I'm eye. Wow. Fuck you. I'll fuck you till you love me. Okay, that's a Mike Tyson <laughs> thing, demon. Come on. A, yeah, it is, though. It's a weird juxtaposition to have the 12-year-old boy saying that to the Catholic priest for a change, though, right? Like, I, I feel mm -hmm. like the movie should know better than to evoke that. But yes. Yeah. So. Yep. I literally did the like, what do you expect of me gesture to the people who got mad at me in the theater? Because I was like, like this little boy just shouted, I'm going to fuck you in a Cockney accent. At <laughs> Russell Crowe dressed as the Michelin man for Halloween. I'm doing my best. OK, are you guys watching a different movie? What are you? Are you be, are you, you scared of this? Vespa? Are you scared of getting fucked by a 12 year old boy? What? <laughs> so, OK, so then they start doing the prayer, the exorcism. The power goes out. I'm like, so what? It's a fucking, this is a candle -y thing anyway. Why the fuck would that matter? But this is just the demon taking over Russell Crowe's mind and making him see his mysterious suicidal girl backstory that we don't know about yet. Right? Ooh. Yeah, trust us. Very interesting. But then the power comes back on and the demon turns to Thomas and he's like, oh, you know what? You have way better sins. Panty sniffer. This guy fucks chicks. This guy fucks chicks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what they're getting on to him for. Yeah, for the consensual sex he had with a woman of age. And Tomas, who had one fucking job to say the easiest to memorize prayer in the world, immediately starts fist fighting this child. <laughs> <laughs> he craps about it. We should point out, he hasn't prayed at any point. He stood there completely silent and still all the way up to this moment. And then the priest is like, oh, you fucked a lady. Thomas fucked a lady. Thomas fucked a lady. And, the, and Thomas jumps up and fucking grabs the kid with both hands by the throat. Yes. Seriously, you watch you watch Russell Crowe give him the nod, be like, "So you remember uh, Hail Mary? Remember, you want to just go remember ahead and what do to it? do?" And Tomas is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and he's all over this kid. Tomas is like, "I know exactly what to do." Stone Cold Stunner on oh, yeah. the child. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Who gets a pussy now, motherfucker? Well, oh, no, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. I wasn't supposed to fist fight the child. My bad. So yeah, so but Russell Crowe and Thomas are like, okay, so that didn't go well. Round one to the demon. We need to. We need to back up and rethink this motherfucker. Can I talk to you out in the hall for a second? Yes. Can I talk to you in the yeah. hall for a second? <laughs> a I feel fun. like our horrible sins from the past all got... Did you hear when that was... Ha like, could you guys hear what I was talking about? Or was it just... We just... Uh, did I say sex? I just want to do a quick rap meeting in the hall. Do you uh, mind you we just are, We're just going to call it. We're going to call it. Demons so aren't real. Just, we're we're going to take off, right? <laughs> real, real quick performance review. I just want to do a quick performance review, Thomas, if I could... <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. We were dangerously close to accidentally finishing the movie right there. So we're going to give the movie a minute to figure out how to draw shit out a bit. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will choking him for shit talking you be the least abusive thing a Catholic priest does in a little boy's bedroom for that entire year? How the fuck is this movie not acknowledging that? What hellscape have we wandered into here? Find out the answers to different questions and more. Will we return for the increasingly funny attempts at scary that are The Pope's Exorcist? And stay out. Okay, uh, Thomas, uh, let's do a quick review because uh, that did not go great. No, Padre? Nope, no, no. So uh, do you remember what I told you to do? Yeah, you said say the Hail Mary. Say Hail Mary. That's, uh, that's a good. Yes. And uh, what did you do? I strangled the boy. You strangled the boy. Exactly. Well, but, but Padre, he, he, he knew my sins. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember I told you that was going to happen, so. Oh, that's right. You did. Yep. Pretty much uh, the only thing I told you. So we're going to go back in and uh, you, this time, you are going to what? Say the Hail Mary. Say the Hail Mary. And if the little boy says something mean to you, you will. That it will still say the prayers. Right. And if he keeps talking mean, you will at that point... So I will strangle him in his no, little throat. No, no, no. You know what? I'm not going to do this one solo. See, si, Padre. Strangle him good. Okay. 
And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to reopen on the Pope still studying away. Like the, we keep cutting back to the Pope looking at books like I'm going to play a role in this movie, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like trying to be an action montage with fake magic reading. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> right. Right. Push it to the limit playing in Latin in the background. <laughs> <laughs> And then we, we cut back to Thomas trying to get over that one time when he got his dick wet, <laughs> right? He's, he's confessing. And, and you, you want to be sympathetic to him, but then he's like, yeah, I kept telling her I was going to leave the priesthood any minute because she was fucking hot, but I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to. You know, I loved God too much. And Russell Crowe's like, doesn't seem like you loved God too much. <laughs> Also, you sniffed her panties. I feel like the way you loved her was wrong, He called you panty too, man. sniffer. That's how we opened this. I feel like there's still let's, more. In fact, now that now that you mentioned that, let's. I'm I'm gonna absolve you again because that was ridiculous. Just to be clear, though, <laughs> that was everything. Now, right? We've heard all your <laughs> sins, please. And, and Thomas is like, yeah, to <laughs> yep. And then, well, and then he's like, so, but what's your mysterious backstory? And Russell Crowe's like, dude, it's barely even act three at this We're point. Not, okay? it's not, oh where, God, this isn't about me. Why are you trying to talk about old shit with me? Right. We're living <laughs> in the now, Thomas, moving on. <laughs> So, but he reminds us, uh, Russell Crowe reminds us that the point here is that they've got to fight out the demon's name. That's super important. He also tells Thomas that, that prayers are more powerful in Latin <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I, I guess there's probably some solid evidence. You've probably collected data on that, huh? Yeah, like, there's like true. a Calvin and Hobbes unit to this and as the factor <laughs> of how well it goes. <laughs> so, okay. So, but then just then Russell Crowe's like, wait a minute. I saw something in the courtyard earlier when I was washing my armpits that may <laughs> make for a dramatic reveal now. Okay, this was almost my best worst. This is so oh, it's good. so funny. So he's so fucking funny. He was looking at a cross seal thing that was on top of the piece of metal that goes over a well, right? That's yes. what that was. Mm -hmm. So like a manhole cover, but for a well, like kind of heavy. So he looks at that and he's like, oh, I got to check under this. And he uses his Vespa like a Jeep commercial to like yep. chain yes. up the to manhole tow cover. The manhole tow cover. Yep. I left so hard. I got in trouble the worst. And it's just, it's this tiny little scooter. So it barely, like it can barely do it. You know, he's just popping an inadvertent wheelie as he's trying to <laughs> do it. The worst commercial ever. <laughs> so good. Like a rock. Oh, no, it's not working. Hold on. Like strong as I, not strong as it. I could use some more strong, actually. The Pete Seeger song. Oh, I so, I so wanted the girl from the ring to crawl out of it, but that. No. Oh, damn it. Now we got the two. Fuck. <laughs> So, and then, okay, so then we cut to mom. She's asleep upstairs, and a disembodied dad arm snuggles her. But trust us, this is a very scary snuggling. It's a very no, it's a horrifying snuggle. He's got pretty big forearms, people. This is pretty spooky. And I should, I should point out that it's not just like an arm, and we see like a, a severed end to it. We just can't see off screen to where he would be, right? Yeah, we, I was expecting any minute for to pick camera to pan over and it's just Russell Crowe. You know, I, <laughs> so, I was in a gladiator. Did you see me in a gladiator? <laughs> so, and then of course, Amy, she's hiding under her blankets from that very scary shave and a haircut prompt that's still that's still going. Thomas is watching over the kids. He's like watching the kid's door or whatever. And he hears this help me sound coming from the kid's room. Like, you know, like he's fucking stuck in a cobweb or something all shrunk down. And he goes in there to check. And he's like, I guess I should probably lean in super, super close to check on this sleeping kid, huh? Thomas is the fucking best. Fuck yeah, Thomas. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Okay, I place my ear gently inside his mouth so I can hear, oh my goodness, he bite me. He bite me. <laughs> so ba basically what happens now, just for, for those of you who aren't sort of picturing or didn't watch the movie, there's like a, Everyone getting their ass kicked montage while Russell Crowe is just out there playing with the well with his Vespa. Yeah. Just digging out a bigger rut with his Vespa the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> well, but then we cut back down to him. He's gotten the, the manhole cover off the well and there's a, a like a ring of skeletons inside of it. And then there's, you know, a well as well. So he's like, hmm, I, best, I guess I should probably dump some fire down into this well in this, in this grounds that we already know have flammable gas deposits here and there. D 
did I mention I'm twin brothers with one of the construction guys who was working here earlier? You know, it doesn't matter. He told me he used a nuclear flashlight and it went really well. So I'm going to do I'm going to do that. Yeah. No, you know what? I'm going to do a very large flare again. Same thing. Right. No, I'll dump some fire down here. Hopefully it'll be fine for the children that are inside. And sure enough, we get a huge explosion. Even if there wasn't gas down there, what would that possibly reveal? You know, as that match was falling down into the well, I got a really clear look at it. Satan's just standing there like, I'm in a well. This I yes. thought you'd see me <laughs> before now. Okay, well. The odds of starting a fire down there are so fucking high. Everything's got to be super dry. We're going to fight in a couple scenes. Is that Satan doing the wordle? <laughs> so, <laughs> I just I didn't want to lose my streak. And you you came a little bit earlier than I thought you would today. <laughs> The New York Times actually changed it. There's a tool you can use to get back your old thing. If you, you <laughs> go to the thing, set it up. You got to be honest about it. Don't lie. Don't change your stats, though. <laughs> Don't lie. That's not a fair. So, so there's a big explosion. Russell Crowe runs in and he's got to save everybody one at a time. Yeah. Right. So first he runs in and he pulls. Mom's been sucked out into the bed. Nightmare on Elm Street 3 style. And uh, he's got to yank mom out of out from the bed. He's got to go in and pray the shit out of the demon for the sister, right? Like the the demons attacking the sister as well, and then I get they have to kick in the door to to out pray the brother. <laughs> it's so funny. I wrote in my notes. This must be how Noah feels when he goes on vacation. Just like, oh god, damn, I left you all alone for five minutes. <laughs> this is also, by the way, where the word Abbott bent appears in Eli's notes right here. I just that this is one of the greatest misspellings. He was going for everything. He got Abbott bent. Okay. In in my defense, I'm having to type on my phone in a theater. I don't have the uh typing acumen that you usually get to enjoy on my computer. No, that's that's true. Yeah, this is a little worse than normal. So okay, and then we cut back to the Pope. He's trying to read a book on this Abbey, but everything has been crossed out. The whole book is redacted, right? Okay, but like no, it hasn't. They just put squiggles on it, man. Well, you can still read it. Yeah, exactly. It's not... <laughs> the Mueller report. Like literally another monk scribbled on those letters, but it's like it's written in illumination. It's literally illuminated. Yeah. So... <laughs> yeah. So, OK, so we cut back to Russell Crowe telling Tomas about the, the, the monster. Well, actually, he's he's going to be very roundabout about explaining that he's found a monster well on the property filled with skeletons. Uh, do you mean when he does a think fast to Tomat with a human skull? Yes, that's the bit. <laughs> like the most dangerous thing this movie does is imply to Eli that you can use human skulls as valid pranks. Look, I mean, it was a good bit, and I think we all agree that everyone would react to that super well. <laughs> he just throws his skull at him. He goes, here, here you go. And, and of course, Tomas is like, uh, dude, where did you get a fucking human skull in the middle of the night? He's like, oh, I found a whole well full of them. Let's go check it out. Yeah. So they go out to the skeleton well. And apparently, this ring of skeletons is from the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expected that. <laughs> and But he says at this point, he's like, the Spanish Inquisition, the darkest time in the Catholic Church's history. And I'm like, I think you underestimate the evil of the Catholic Church, my friend. Mm, not so much, buddy. Nice try. <laughs> There's a there's a lot of competition is all I'm saying. Let's see, I wrote in my notes, books, the Catholic Church's greatest enemy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So they so they head down to the basement and they check out Henry's glory hole from earlier. Russell Crowe's like, well, there's something interesting through here. I better just knock this wall down with a sledgehammer. I'm like, oh, please tell me it's load bearing. <laughs> oh, God, how funny with it. The demons just comes running downstairs. I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to be the evil one, but dude, look, there's two there. Yeah, exactly. There's a pillar there and a pillar there. You're a fucking idiot. God damn it. <laughs> oh, man, I, I'm going to do a quick fly to Home Depot. I got to do everything around here. So, but sure enough, there's a Vatican seal beyond the wall and, and that's going to take them to some backstory. But yeah, so it's, they break through the wall and. And they find more skeletons. And I'm like, boo, boring. You already did skeletons. But these skeletons are surrounded by Spanish Inquisition torture stuff. Right. And these skeletons are also, fun fact, an escape room. So that's fun. Yeah. It's a fun little uh, that is fun. Uh, they escape are, yeah. room. 
so there's a there's this locked door, and Russell Crowe's like, "Oh, big gate that says don't open. Definitely try to open that." And he's like, mm-hmm. "I don't know." Gotta, it's gotta open that. Like, yeah, you gotta check though, because it could have just that. That's funny if they they bluff it and you just can go right out. <laughs> no, okay. But it's worse because he goes, "I know where the key is. It's inside this dead guy's stomach." For no reason whatsoever. He might as well be like, no, I've seen the movie. It's inside his stomach. Yeah. Okay. I think I understand what they were claiming here. Tell me if I have this right. Th- this catacomb has a bunch of people who tried to get exercised, but the priests or whatever couldn't pull it off. So they still had demons. So they put the, the people with demons in them down there. And they also put a really famous exorcist priest hero who's stayed inside a cage in the middle of that room, not so much to, like, as a guard, like, it's like a shark cage. So he wasn't, yes. like, caged in. He was keeping himself safe from all the demon people. And he also set up an escape room and swallowed the key. Honestly, I think that's pretty much exactly what they were going for. I, it was it was a little weird, but yes. So, yeah, and Russell Crowe's like, who, where would you have hidden your key? Well, and I'm like, well, it's in a cage, right? So it's it's going to be in the cage. And he's like, I bet it's in your stomach. And I'm like, the dude's been dead for because this is Spanish Inquisition. This was the beginning of the Spanish Inquisition. So this guy's been a skeleton for five hundred fucking years. There's no stomach. <laughs> well, and it would it would be ass by now at least, right? Would, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was like, okay, it's going to be ass. And yeah, the movie pulled a key out of its ass here, and they were like, escape room. There you go. <laughs> it sure does. So, yeah, so he gets the key and oh, and then we have to we cut over to the Pope. He's found a letter inside the redacted book about the movie's premise. And it's so overwhelmingly interesting. We don't know what it says, but it's so overwhelmingly interesting that he has a, a fucking plot attack or whatever. <laughs> and they have to take him to the hospital. Right. So we go back to the catacombs. They unlock the gate. Right. They get out of the escape room. Meanwhile, mom wakes up and she and, and Amy's nowhere to be found, right? He she hears some terrifying giggling. Trust us, it's very scary giggles. Very scary children's giggles, we promise. Yeah, so she goes to check that out. I wrote in my notes, she lost another kid to demons. Get a life alert, lady. Come on. <laughs> Bad parenting. And then we cut back to Russell Crowe and Thomas, and we have to I have to point this line out. It's so fucking stupid. Thomas goes, It smells like sulfur. And Russell Crowe says. We're getting closer to hell. <laughs> okay. The, so the place, just, just to be clear, <laughs> just to be clear, according to this movie, hell, the place is directly under this building. Like this abbey. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just this one spot. It's about 11 feet down in Spain. <laughs> so. Like if you want to put a water main through, you have to talk to hell about you like the talk to, yeah, eminent it's a whole domain thing. laws regarding yeah. hell. Yeah, right. You know, you, they have a they have an eight hundred number. So, and then we we have the the bishops from earlier. They're checking on the pope to see if he's okay after his whatever the fuck is supposed to have happened to him. And the skeptical pope that wanted to downsize the exorcism department, he's there. And of course, we have to see him like, you know, get his, get what's coming to him. So the Pope just projectile vomits blood all over him. And the movie never acknowledges it or never talks about it again. It's just like, and we're just like, okay, I guess that'll be relevant. Nope. No, no, no. Doubters get blood puke. (laughs) Papal blood puke. That's what you deserve. I wanted a mouthful of doves to come out like the birds from before. Oh, Oh, there you go. Yeah. Cancel it out from the Cardinal. So, okay. So, meanwhile, back in the catacombs, Russell Crowe has found the remains of the greatest exorcist that ever lived. Mm-hmm. How do they think they're measuring it when they say something like that? <laughs> what stat is it? Well, he had 129,000 exorcists. Yeah, okay. right, right. 161. Also, this is supposed to be this big revelation, and I I want to spend nine hours talking about this big revelation that happens, but I do have to point out that the entire time this big revelation where he's going to read the exorcist journal is happening, Thomas is playing with the Iron Maiden. Yes. He's just like, <laughs> uh, Hey, don't, uh, don't play with that. Don't play with it. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm playing with the dolly again. I see you looking at it. Take your hand off. Uh, it's so loud. <laughs> but yeah, but luckily the greatest exorcist ever died with his journal in his hand. Mm-hmm. And also luckily, Russell Crowe turned right to the relevant page. Yeah. <laughs> right. That always happens in movies. Like in real life, you'd have, you, you have to wait around for hours like reading about like how his peas were doing that he planted this summer or whatever. But no, but he turns right to the relevant page that tells us the story. 
No, he just goes right to like the history and clicks on like, we'll go back to that tab. Yeah. Yeah. And he's right. right on it. Okay. And we learn that this demon they're dealing with can do multiple demon mm-hmm. possessions at once during during finales. Right. Especially. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. Can't do it in the first act. Or he anything. saves it for finales. Yeah. But but what we learn is that what happened is this exorcist, he lost to the demon. He got all full up with demons. And the Spanish Inquisition was actually a demon's pro Right. So this demon possessed the greatest exorcist that ever lived. And then once he was possessed with demons, he was like, hey, you know what would be great would be the Spanish Inquisition. So and, and and it was his fault. So the movie's argument here is that the Spanish Inquisition was actually the devil's fault, not the church's. If you it think was about the devil's it. fault. Yeah. <laughs> the movie actually says here, yeah, everything since 1475, that's the devil being evil in the world. That's why the world is evil now, ever since then. But you know, super good before that. The church was super good. We were crushing yeah, it no, before we were, we 1400. Were yeah, nothing was wrong. Amazing. No evil before that. Well, but like, even if we accepted that ridiculous fucking premise, like all the non-possessed people in the Vatican went along, right? So they they were pretty close. I'm telling you, this was a very persuasive demon. Did a lot of networking. A lot of networking. Was great at bringing people together. Excellent project manager. You know, (laughs) he beat the greatest exorcist of all time. I mean, come on. Well, that's true. According to this movie's fucking like world state that they have now built, the demon was like, all right, now for me to slowly work my way up the corporate structure of the Catholic Church as a demon, just like, oh, hello, nice to meet you. Oh, a dinner at your house. I would love that because I'm. Not a demon. Well, and then also, like, like <laughs> if you know anything at all about the Spanish Inquisition, like, that would mean that that same demon also would have had to put in force all of these great societal movements and, like, global anti-Semitism and shit. It's so you know what's the perfect dumb. crime? You know what's the perfect crime? The Holocaust. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. Hey, what's going on? I'm a local priest from a couple of countries away. Just wanted to make sure all you guys hated the Jews here in yeah. East Weimar. <laughs> Everyone here hate the Jews. Okay, good. good. Right, I'm, just, I'm, just I'm, I'm, just, I'm totally going to be able to uh, possess this boy in like wide. 1987. Every, everything's coming up as modius. So, <laughs> so then, so so mom goes to check in on Henry and damn it if Amy isn't co-possessed at this point, right? So we got that going on upstairs. Downstairs, Russell Crowe realizes that the demon is trying to raise, to bring together the army of all 200 demons that fell from having all of the fallen angels, right? It's like me adding extra pieces to the Wanda seven parts over on TNT. <laughs> and it turns out there's 200 demons. Right, right. It's fucking one of them's a dragon. I don't know. <laughs> all the colors, something. Yeah, so we learn it's the dragon demon Asmodeus here, the king of hell that they're dealing with. That's how the, they know that like, you know, you can go to multiple people and it's a big deal. At this moment, when that gets revealed, there was there's a guy, there's like four people in the whole theater. One of them, one guy s- sitting to my right, was I'm pretty sure a serious Christian blogger because he had a notebook. Oh, interesting. And he was re- like unironically reviewing this awesome Christian movie about exorcism. And when I, when Asmodeus gets revealed, he started writing furiously and like saying <laughs> things to himself. <laughs> and, oh, man, Asmodeus. <laughs> well. So here's the dumbest fucking thing about this, right? Because they find the name in the in the journal. It's Osmodius. Now, the whole fucking movie, they're like, oh, if only we knew this demon's name, we could, you know, we could thwart him or whatever. But it's one of like the seven demon names that I personally know. Wouldn't you just start with the list of the main demons and see which ones he winced at? Right? <laughs> if there's 200 of them, that's not even yeah, like an but- afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, this should take less time than fucking Thomas confessing his sins. Yeah, we we fill we fill more people in that in a live show. <laughs> fucking hire Tim Robertson to be like, all right, let's see, Asmodeus. Oh wow, right at the top of the list. Great. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's always alphabetical. That's yeah, you can. It's always the last one you choose. Am I right? So you're not the werewolf out loud. Okay, you're <laughs> so, the werewolf. You're Asmodeus. So then, okay, so then Thomas realizes that the demon's been after Russell Crowe this whole time, and I'm like, how are we just? This isn't a reveal. They act like it's a fucking reveal, but apparently Osmodius's whole thing is taking over the chief exorcist, right? That's what he's after. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And this is where Thomas tries to like leave the movie, which I loved. He's like, yeah, so Hell Dragon clearly 
wants you, man, because you're the best exorcist. I'm just, I guess, I don't know, I'll take off and then you. you can <laughs> right, right. Russell Crowe's like, no, no, you're already in the movie. No, no. Come on, man, I'm just a side guy. No, you're here for your comic shenanigans. Come on, Thomas. <laughs> Later, I'm going to need you to lose a fight to a teenage girl. Stay focused. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so like this is where Russell Crowe's like, oh, well, you know, I, I, I think I'm going to need to be super absolved of my sin. So let me hurriedly fill you in on all my mysterious backstory stuff. Right. right? It's like, okay, so let me see. Uh, there was the flashback. I was in the war. I was sad I didn't die or something. I don't really know. But wait, wait. Then, you know, that mysterious girl in all the things. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that I was going to exercise her but right. um she didn't Ozzy Osbourne what and I was like yucko bit the head off of a, a bird it wasn't a bat but she bit a bird she ate birds live birds <laughs> bit a bird uh, yeah and so I was like yuck and I just left not great on my part and then she killed herself is there something in the bible that I missed about eating and vomiting birds in like the book of revelation <laughs> or something <laughs> no, I don't know. Just, that's just the, their thing that they thought was cool and and then Ooh, but bats are birds like Ozzy Osbourne. Maybe. Oh, Ooh. maybe that's what they're going for. Making the connections. This is good writing. So, but here's the terrifying backstory that we're actually getting here. He was sent to exercise a demon from a girl, decided that, no, she's actually just schizophrenic, left her in the hands of psychologists, and then she killed herself, which is how he knows to never leave people in the hands of psychologists anymore. So, but then it's, now we're going to get the classic arming up scene, right? The fucking oh, action yeah. movie, final act. He's putting on all of his exorcism. She goes to the family and he's like, I need to bless you all with the armor of God. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not going to list it because it sounds so silly, but trust me, you need the armor <laughs> of God. Are you, pull, you pulling out like soccer shin guards? What do you got there? Yeah, what is that? What, so, like, it feels like if you had the armor of God blessing, you would have opened with that. Like just give everybody that to begin with. It's not like you have fucking spell slots that you have to expend to do it, <laughs> yeah. right? Like rollerblade wrist guards and shit. <laughs> so then Russell Crowe and, and Thomas go back in for one last exorcism. They're going to bring the fucking mom and the daughter for some reason this time, right? Yeah. But we should point out, by the way, that Henry is tied up. I want to point that out because that's a real thing they do in so-called exorcisms from time to time, which is incredibly fucked up. Yeah. Great for the health, the mental health of someone who's going through psychosis, by the way, being tied down. Oh, sure. Excellent. Really, really improves the situation. Let Ooh, me tell you. Jesus Christ. So they start trying to do the exorcism of, and of course the demon gets in his head right away. We see Rosario standing there eating, but she's eating a bird like a cartoon character eating corn on the cob. <laughs> she's eating right? all I can, it's me trying to podcast in the first year of this show. Just like <laughs> you guys doing an exorcism. <laughs> it's got beans in it. They say you're not supposed to put beans in the chili, but. But this, by the way, this was the first time that I laughed out loud in the theater. So I think I won if that's the if You that's definitely won. Well, yeah. No, they got me with I'm going to fuck you. I was, yeah, I was, I, we, got, we got Heath the first time, the vest, but They got me in minute three with Russell yeah. Crowe on a vest. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, and so then we get him seeing the suicidal girl with the bird. And then Thomas's girl shows up, but like naked. So this is where we get a, a quick uh, moment of boobs in the movie. Yeah, boobs. But again, boobs aren't scary. I'm sorry. I was just going to say. be a fucking horror movie. <laughs> yeah, there's just a hot chick's breasts and the movie's like, huh? Pretty terrifying, right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, maybe like, you know, desiccated boobs, like in the shining kind of boobs or something like that. But like, the, but her boobs are just lovely. They're just a lovely set of boobs. And so you're just like, all right, I'm not. What am I supposed to feel like right now? This is the opposite of a pop scare. What would the, what's the word for that? Right, I yeah. like this pleasantly. And by the way, Thomas, still not fucking praying. Still not He's doing his job. He still just did. Now, as I wrote that, he actually did start praying. In the movie, Finally, but, he starts yeah, praying. Yeah. He, he stares at the boobs for like 48 minutes and then he's like, right, sorry. Hail Our Mary, Father, full Lord, Lord. Heaven. Right, but he fucks it up even when he starts doing it because the whole thing is like, it's Latin versus demon growling. That's the fight here. Mm -hmm. And Russell Crowe's like, do the thing. I fucking told you nine times. We're doing it now. And they start chanting in Latin together. <laughs> but Thomas is a little bit off. So Russell Crowe's like, get with me, get with me on the R. 
Father, two, York, three, father, four, so one, R. No, roll when your I boat, start again, I'm going to start I'll it again. I'll clap on one and three. Gonna, on one and three? <laughs> <laughs> That's not even one and three. I hate Nani. I hate Nani. I hate Nani. Hey. <laughs> so, and then, so they start chanting and the demon's like fighting or whatever. The Henry opens his mouth to a goddamn beetle juicy in degree. It's, and again, it's supposed to be scary, but it's just this hilariously like, well, that's not how mouths work. What did you <laughs> see a pretty lady and your tongue and eyeballs are going to fall out? <laughs> <laughs> also, look, here's the thing about fucking, uh, what are they called? Exorcism movies. Here's the thing about exorcism movies. Jesus and his special friends are supposed to be more powerful than the demon. That never happens in this movie. They're like, the power of Christ. And he's like, fuck Jesus. Magic powers, magic powers. And they're like, right. the power of Christ. And he's like, kick you in the balls. And they're like, oh, the fucking power of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you evolve me, you asshole? Do the power of Christ thing. God damn it. So then the demon takes over Amy as well, right? Amy starts spider walking up the ceiling. Trust is very, very scary. Not silly looking at all when she very spider scary. walks. Again, she's just straight stolen from the ring. Does the ring walk thing? Does yeah. literally the ring walk thing? Well, and then they do the they do the carving in on the torso thing, which they ripped off from Nightmare on Elm Street three. So mm -hmm. yeah, like everything that's interesting in this movie is derivative. Yeah, they don't even do it right. They do the ring walk, and she's she's possessed by a demon. So she like walks up onto the ceiling, and she's like. I ceiling walked. Yeah, right. Like that's, Okay, that was nothing. Less, I thought, yeah, all right, so well, we'll just we're, fight now. We're down right. here on the floor, though. Yeah, right. And, and then the demon remembers that he's got fucking force push, right? And he's like, oh, you know what? Fuck, I can throw you guys around the room. I could have just I been do doing that the whole push. fucking time. I'm going to go ahead and use Why my force I? push. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I really swung and missed with the whole boobs thing. I thought you guys would be more upset about that. They're, uh, they're two uh, celibate guys. I'm just saying. <laughs> no judgment here, but uh, no, I got it now. Now we're doing force push. Yeah. So well, he's force pushing Russell Crowe. He's hanging Thomas with like a like a curtain or something. A, with his tie. Fucking magic carpet from Aladdin attacks Thomas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. He gets the shit beat out of him by Doctor Strange's cape. And then Amy is she's still possessed. She's trying to drown mom in the bathtub, which means they just had a full bathtub it for I don't know what the hell the reason. For that would have been. Did somebody draw a bath in here? I thought we would just be fighting. <laughs> now we're all wet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> just picturing the demon in this little boy's body running a bath. Do -do -do. <laughs> so, uh, these things take forever to fill up. It's oh, always man. so funny because you're like, I want a bath. This is like waiting for the conditioner to work. It's a weird. It's going to run out of right. hot water before exactly. I fill it up. Right. That's the problem. Weird amount of time. Uh, I'm going to do the wordle. <laughs> so, and then, and then Russell Crowe is like, Demon, you can have me. Leave this family alone. You can possess me instead. And the demon's like, really? We're going to, because that's the exorcism. Like, so many exorcism Super movies have already done this. It's so derivative. And he's like, no, we really aren't going to do that. And then we cut to the Pope long enough for the Pope to scream, Gabriel, no. <laughs> <laughs> so silly. Everyone around his bed is like, hey, check out all the altar boys. Anyone named Gabriel, just start giving him the, the cemetery fund. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, Jesus. So, yeah, so, but Henry comes to, he's all unpossessed now. Russell Crowe tells Thomas to get the family the fuck out of there so that he can, like, kill himself and completely rip off the end of The Exorcist, right? All right, Russell, thank you so much for your work so far in the movie. It's been very scary, very mm -hmm. dramatic. How do you plan to play the priest when he finally has been entered by the demon. Have you ever seen an overweight man really need to take a shit? I was thinking oh of doing God. that for the last 10 minutes of the movie. He damn near does the all of me, the Steve Martin from all of me bit with the demon <laughs> having one side and him having the other. It's so fucking silly. This whole last scene of him like stumbling around half possessed by the demon, but half not. As a fellow IBS survivor, I too know what it's like <laughs> to have Asmodeus the king of hell inside you. <laughs> really got to get on some highest guy. I mean, really helps it out. Let me tell you. <laughs> also, right in the middle of this fucking scene, we cut back to that doubtful priest that wanted to downsize the exorcism department walking into some church in Italy somewhere and the crucifix on the wall starts bleeding like crazy, right? That's going to that's gonna be super important at the end. I have to point that out. 
Mm-hmm. So the demon was like in this fight and was like, quick, quick time out. I'm going to do a thing at a chapel far away. Yeah. I'm, I have to do a little blood taunt. <laughs> okay, we're back. We're back. Right, 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 fight. Right. Or it's miraculous. And Jesus was like, fuck, Russell Coe just got entered by a demon. And now he's walking like Eli after a meal of spicy chili. I should bleed in the Vatican. I should have a statue <laughs> bleed in the Vatican. <laughs> so, so, so Thomas gets the family. He sends the family away, but he doesn't leave. He goes back in for some more demon fight. Russell Crowe tries to kill himself. The demon's like, no, like, that's literally exactly the ending of every fucking, we can't do that. So he unkills him. Like, he tries to hang himself and the demon, like, swings him to safety or something. And again, I cannot emphasize how funny this montage is. It's just, it's just him trying to do the happening and this demon jumping in the way for the next three and a half minutes. Yeah, no, it's like better off dead or something. Yeah. But eventually he demon stumbles his way to the catacombs, which seems like the last place that you would want to go. But that's where he goes. Thomas goes after him. Now, he's about to make like set him. I guess he's going to explode himself because there's gas deposits there or whatever. But just then, oh. I, I don't know. I, I, I might be tr- giving this movie too much credit. But just when he's about to do that, this white glowing apparition appears and it's the Virgin Mary. And I fucking go <laughs> at the Virgin Mary. I thought she was going to win the movie right here. How? Yeah. Okay, let's just say this right now. Let's say this with our hearts. Let's be as brave as we can and say that if the Virgin Mary had landed and then beaten the shit out of Russell Crowe <laughs> in a kung fu fight, I single-handedly <laughs> fund the sequel for this film. Sure. This The next film yep. is funded by Eli Bosnick. <laughs> so- No, but it turns out that this is actually demon Virgin Mary. She turns all demonic like a fucking punchline at the end. Okay, but that's nothing. That's it's just like a little trick for like you got him a little two seconds of like ah no just fucking (laughs) grab that phone call though grab that phone right now. (laughs) It's way more pranks than I expected from right the ultimate demon. Oh look at that! Look at that, Russell Crowe. That looks like someone dropped a dollar on the ground. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe want to get shit. Wait, it's it's clogged. It's I gotta unloose the thing. Okay, now get the dollar. So, t- so Thomas comes in though, right? So Russell Crowe's sitting on that weird little throne thing where the other exorcist was. He's all demoned up. And that demon is like, Thomas, you're too late. And he's like, no, there's no time limit on this. That's bullshit. I just have to pray in Latin at you. Right? Yeah. And and also eh, in slam poetry cadence. Yes. Uh, oh, that's, absolutely. That's the finale. The finale, instead of like normal fighting maybe in an action finale, is like, Bible quotes in that cadence of I Mm -hmm. am saying the Latin to you that I have not quite memorized yet. (laughs) So and then so and that makes Russell Crowe start floating around Magneto style with his arms out and everything. And you Mm. think it's over and the demon's like, not so fast. Noah doesn't get to pee just yet. And then the demon like manifests suicide girl and boob girl. To fight them? The ult. It's time for them. The ultimate fight against two 20 something women. <laughs> it's pretty fucking and weird. I'm, I want to be clear. They are. We will watch. The ending of this movie is Russell Crowe, thick boy that he is, and Tomas just being like, all right, motherfucker. <laughs> just uppercutting these teenage girl stuntmen. <laughs> I was howling with laugh. I was like, I'm going to get thrown out of this theater and miss the last five. I could, I was crying with laughter at the, when he, he puts a cross up at one point at girl, he fucked and she explodes into a big thing of blood. I could not see the screen because I was laughing so hard. (laughs) So you remember the brawls in Roadhouse? It's like that, except with like naked women instead of Swayze and Sam Elliott fighting other bar people. Yeah. Yeah, and well, and, and and Thomas takes care of his girl by exploding her with his cross, and Russell Crowe's like, "Oh well, I have a cross. That's a great idea." So he explodes Suicide Girl with his cross too, and his cross is so much bigger than Thomas's. Very clearly, Russell Crowe being like, "I get a much bigger one." Yes, in this scene. that was in his contract. I'm gonna need a bigger. I'm gonna need a bigger cross. He like went to a prop guy and fucked with it, and was like, <laughs> "It's got to be like 19 times too big." And when the scene happens, other guy is so mad. The guy playing Thomas is like, oh, all right. Well, I have- well that's it's kind of a dick move. I'm helping. I, guess. I don't know. So, I wanted to leave earlier. 
so, but then there's a great big hell explosion. The demon gets sucked into this hell vortex thing. It looks like something from a PlayStation Two game. It's just, it's fucking awful. Yeah, but but that's it. That's they they've defeated Osmodius. They've won the day. The family is safe. So we get a quick moment of them like regrouping after the exorcism. Yeah, Russell Crowe is like, all right, five o'clock somewhere, right? Yeah, pulls out his flask. They do a fucking lethal weapon close where they're like walking away from the exploding house. I don't know if I'm too old for this show shit to moss. Yeah. I don't know if I'm too old. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, we're almost done. I almost get to leave the theater and pee. But first, Russell Crowe has to scooter his way back to the Vatican to see the Pope. Now, keep in mind, when he gets to the Vatican, Thomas is going to be with him. Right. So either Thomas rode on the back of his scooter Dumb and Dumber style, mm -hmm. and we just didn't see that part. Or Thomas is just like, yeah, man, I'm just going to take a fucking train or something. I just do a sane le type of transport <laughs> between Spain and Italy. In my head, it's a sidecar on the Vespa. Nice. <laughs> That'd be cool. There's another sidecar on the other side that is uh, the just a dog with, with glasses. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so he goes in to see the Pope. He's like, he brings Thomas. He's like, see, here, here Thomas, this is my buddy, the Pope. <laughs> no big deal. This is me and, me and the Pope hanging out. By the way, in case anyone's wondering, because I did actually Google it, it's 19 hours and 50 minutes of driving to get from Spain to Vatican City. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can, you can do that. You can do that pretty yeah. quick yeah, on your Vespa. So the Pope is like, hey, guys, great job kicking Satan's ass. Yeah, he go, He asks him, how did it go? And he's, he says, not so bad. And I wrote in my notes, it absolutely was bad, my guy. <laughs> there were multiple explosions. People got their ears bitten off. It's A 12-year-old like, city was going to fuck you. I feel like you're really <laughs> underselling this, man. Well, and then and Russell Crowe's like, yeah, I sure hope that they don't still tear down the teen center. And the Pope is like, oh, you didn't hear? The doubting priest that wanted to downsize your department saw a bloody fucking crucifix in a random scene lost his goddamn mind and we had to like take him off of that position but don't worry bishop lumumba who we've already established as your friend is going to take over so it looks like we're going to still have an exorcism department after all it's so fucked up because this is based on a true story there's probably a guy who was in the vatican throughout this being like we can't have an exorcism department that's insane <laughs> we're already insane this is wrong. And they fired that guy to make this thing keep happening. Yeah. So, and then we have one final scene. I love this. And it's it's worth sticking around for this last scene, right? Fuck yeah. Because this is Lumumba showing Russell Crowe and Thomas that they've created sort of a, like, I don't know, a demon command center. Shield. We've created shields. Yes, yes demon Like, shields. no, seriously, like a crime lab like NORAD for demon appearances yes, it's so for the other 199 demons and Russell Crowe and Tomas look at each other like there's going to be a sequel. Yeah. And I wrote, I wrote my notes. Look, this is the worst podcast of to attempt I'd ever seen. Yeah. No, the Lumumba is like, well, if you think about it, this could be a whole cinematic franchise. And Russell Crowe's like, yeah, I mean, not with me, but with you and this asshole that plays Thomas. Sure. Yeah. No, I get it. I get no, it. I'm, I'm eventually going to drop this weight and I'll get to be in regular movies again. I appreciate the offer, though, guys. Maybe you can get like a, a TV show on NBC, like yeah. Agents <laughs> of Shield. <laughs> Agents of Yield. <laughs> what? Thank you. So and and then so Thomas says, let's go to work. And then Russell Crowe says, let's go to hell. Oh, and God. we all wrote in our notes, what? So good. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. They didn't go to hell in the moot, right? Like, no, they, no. what is he even talking about? Yeah. Were they going to dig 11 feet down and just like walk? <laughs> Well, like yes. what? <laughs> no, Vespa. <laughs> right. scooch. We'll scooch down. <laughs> so, yeah, but then and we get an actual breakfast club close. Father of Morth died in 2016. So he can he can't like say we're lying about any other shit that we say about him. Yeah. The end. They also they also mentioned that Father of Morth wrote a bunch of books and the books are fucking good assholes. The yeah. end. <laughs> Why did you read them? And while that does it for our review of The Pope's Exorcist, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to close on a high note. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, while the movie theater has provided us plenty of crazy, it doesn't hold a candle to the crazy that awaits us on YouTube. So we'll be tackling Spirit Science Channel's 
the Nibiru movie. Oh, good. Okay. A tackling sounds like I know that that's that was a misstatement, but that sounds about right. I think we're going to we're going to keep that. So with that to look forward to. We're going to bring episode 401 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing A, The Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Rat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotting of Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn on the chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. I once threw a toy to Russell Crowe in real life at F.A.O. Schwartz Toy Store, and he just grabbed it, threw it back, and walked away without saying a word. Because he's an asshole. Yep. One out of every three characters in this movie would go on to rape children. And the other two would actively cover it up. You guys sure you don't want another Pope's Exorcist movie? Russell has next summer. Wide open. Got it? Okay. Tickets or crickets would have worked, though. And I like, I know the, the joke doesn't work if the thing works, but tickets or crickets is pretty good. Sure, now you tell me. Yep. Right. Click it or ticket, rickets. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2023.